Okay, so good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present our results here. Our group is focused on the study of uh, adult neurogenesis and neural stem cells and so during this presentation I would like to speak about a nuclear structure that we think is related to uh, neural stem cell quiescence. And next I will also present very briefly our results on uh, neuronal migration in most mouse uh, injury models and about the development of the human temporal lobe. So, as many of you know in the audience, uh, adult neurogenesis uh, occurs mainly in two regions in the, in the brain of many mammals. Uh, and the first of these two regions is the ventricular subventricular zone, represented in pink in this diagram. And actually, I'm very lucky that uh, Dr. Isabel Farinas uh, made a, a brilliant uh, introduction, introduction of this uh, region uh, during her talk this morning. And the second region is uh, the subgranular zone in the, in the uh, dentate gyrus of the hippocampus. While new neurons produced in the uh, subgranular zone are integrated next to where they are born, new neurons generated in the ventricular subventricular zone need to migrate very long distances uh, until they reach uh, uh, the, the olfactory valve. These distances can be uh, as long as four millimeters in the mouse brain. So once these new neurons reach the olfactory valve, they disperse, differentiate, and integrate into pre-existing neural circuits in, in a continuous turnover. So as you can imagine, these processes are very finely regulated, and here we have the uh, cellular composition of the ventricular subventricular zone, where we have uh, neural stem cells, or type B cells, represented in green in the diagram, which are just beneath the pendimal cell layer, uh, which is lining the, the walls of the lateral ventricles. These neural stem cells uh, have astroclial uh, features, and they are able to self-renew, but also to give rise to intermediate precursors, or type C cells, and eventually they turn into neoneurons, uh, oligodendrocytes, or astrocytes. So most of the experiments I will show you next uh, were performed by Arantxa Febrian during her PhD in, in our lab. And Arantxa's project started with a repeated observation of a very peculiar nuclear structure, which is highlighted by green arrows in these images, and is more clearly uh, visualized maybe in, in these uh, nuclear profiles below. And uh, these nuclear structures were present in some of the ventricular subventricular zone cells uh, from reptiles to humans. So we reasoned that uh, since uh, nuclear morphology has been related to cell potency and cell quiescence, maybe these uh, structures uh, had some biological uh, significance in, in this regard. So when we studied these structures uh, under the electron microscope in more detail, we found that they were always formed by a 30 nanometer chromatin sheet bounded on the two sides by the inner and outer uh, nuclear membrane, forming this sandwich-like structure. Actually, these uh, structures had already been described in neutrophils and also in cancer cells, and they were named Envelope Limited Chromatin Seeds, or ELCS. Nevertheless, the overall morphology of, this, of the nuclei of the cells in the ventricular subventricular zone presenting these structures is completely dif different from that of neutrophils, as you can see in this three-dimensional reconstruction. So the first question we wanted to answer at that point was uh, which cell types presented ELCS in the ventricular subventricular zone. So using confocal microscopy uh, on whole mount samples stained for lamin B to visualize the nuclear envelope, we determined that only GFAP positive type B cells presented a structure similar to ELCS, as you can see in this image here. Furthermore, we <coughs> studied the, the uh, complete uh, a morphology of the nuclei of these cells uh, in three-dimensional reconstructions under the electron microscope, and we confirmed that only a subset of type B cells, uh, corresponding to 46% of the total population of these uh, cells in the ventricular subventricular zone, presented ELCS. In contrast, uh, none of the other cell types in, in this region presented this structure. So we next uh, asked uh, what was the molecular phenotype of uh, the cells present in ELCS. And using immune electron microscopy with uh, antibodies uh, conjugated to gold particles, we found that they were GFAP, BLBP class positive, while they were EGFR nesting negative. Uh, presenting exactly the same molecular phenotype as uh, quiescent neural stem cells in the ventricular subventricular zone, as you can see in this diagram below. 
So to confirm this result, to confirm that uh, cells with ELCS are actually uh, uh, quiescent neural stem cells, we, <coughs> uh, we carried out proliferation studies with trijectic thymidine, uh, which is incorporated by dividing cells. So after identifying, uh, identifying these uh, proliferating cells in semithin sections, we followed them in the electron microscope and found that none of the uh, dividing cells that we identified presented ELCS supporting the notion that uh, cells with ELCS are actually quiescent. So we next asked uh, whether uh, cells were able to form ELCS uh, sometime after dividing. So using a slightly different protocol with a longer survival time, two, two months in this, occasion, in this occasion, we confirmed once again that uh, label retaining cells uh, didn't present this uh, ELCS structure. Support, uh, supporting or suggesting that uh, these once uh, type B cells activate, uh, they don't present this type uh, of a structure. So to further confirm our conclusion, we used a different experiment using uh, intraventricular infusions of uh, ARAC dur uh, during six days. ARAC is uh, an antimitotic drug which induces cell death of actively dividing neural stem cells, while quiescent neural stem cells are spurred. So after uh, this RAC treatment, we found uh, that uh, the number of, or the total number of type B cells in the ventricular subventricular zone decreased as we expected. But interestingly enough, the percentage of type B cells with ELCS relative to the total number of B cells significantly increased, indicating that type B cells with ELCS survive RAC treatment and therefore suggesting that they are quiescent. So after obtaining uh, evidence uh, supporting our hypothesis, we wondered whether ELCS might be related to some uh, gene regulation mechanism related to cell quiescence. And interestingly, we found that TRF2, a uh, telomere sheltering component, uh, is preferentially localized to the ELCS region of the nucleus, as you can see in this image here, but maybe more clearly in the quantification. Indeed, it has also been proposed that uh, telomere nuclear positioning might be related to uh, cell longevity and, and quiescence. And so we used uh, freeze probes to uh, identify uh, these telomere sequences within the nucleus, and we uh, found that they were particularly enriched in the ELCS region compared to other regions of the nucleus. So altogether, our results suggest that uh, the special topography of ELCS might be uh, related to the regulation of a specific uh, gene programs uh, related to cell quiescence. So another aspect that really interests us is neural migration in mouse brain injury models. Uh, this is uh, the result of a collaboration with uh, the group of Professor Katsunobu Sawamoto in Nagoya City University in Japan. And well, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of uh, this presentation, new neurons produced in the ventricular subventricular zone, represented in red in this diagram, uh, migrate to the olfactory bulb, uh, providing olfactory plasticity. This is what uh, happens in normal conditions. But when an injury occurs, many of these new, new neurons change the, their migration pathways and they are attracted to the injury site. So we have found that in this migration process, new neurons uh, use scaffolds such as radial glia processes in the, non, in the neonatal brain, but also blood vessels and associative processes in, in the adult brain. So what typically uh, happens is that uh, new neurons, labeled in red in this time lapse movie, uh, efficiently migrate from the ventricular subventricular zone towards the injury site, but once they reach its boundary, they either slow down or change the direction. So, to overcome this problem, we have tried different approaches. And for example, we have found that the slit one of expression uh, uh, facilitates the migration of uh, transplanted giant neurons in the injured brain in post-stroke uh, mouse models. Slit one robot two signaling is uh, used by young neurons to disrupt the acting cytoskeleton of astrocytes. So transplanting uh, slit one of expressing uh, young neurons in the brain, in the injured brain, uh, significantly enhances the speed and the distance these cells can reach uh, when they are migrating, migrating towards the injury compared to control uh, young neurons. Conversely, uh, we also found that in slit one knockout mice, uh, studied by electron microscopy, uh, astrocytes irregularly inserted within chains of migrating near neurons, 
making excessive contact with these cells compared to the uh, wild type mouse. Furthermore, we also found that the overexpression of uh, SLIT1 um, induced a significant improvement in the neurological function of these animals five weeks after injury. And also that these improvements were sustained for at least an additional five weeks, suggesting that this uh, enhanced migration can induce uh, at least a partial recovery in, in, in uh, mouse stroke models. Nevertheless, uh, uh, due to the large size of the human brain, uh, more efficient interventions are needed, and, uh, that's, w and uh, that's why we are now focused on on the development of these artificial sc uh, scaffolds based, based on biomaterials, like this gelatinous sponge here, or this uh, water-soluble uh, hydrogel, which is able to self-assemble once it is injected into the brain. We combined these materials with uh, uh, cell addition molecule encadering or with uh, cell matrix uh, protein laminin. And we found that uh, both strategies uh, offered very promising results. So we are now focused on this type of approach. Finally, I will segue to the final part of my talk and I will uh, speak very briefly about the, human de the development of the human temporal lobe. And this uh, project is also the result of a long collaboration with the group of uh, Arturo Al Alvarez Guilla in UCSF and his former postdocs, Mercedes Paredes and, and Sean Sorrells, who are now running their own labs. Uh, in our analysis, we focused on the study of the dentate gyros in the hippocampus and the amygdala, both of them in the temporal lobe of the brain, as you know. And our data suggests that uh, the development of these two structures seems to be slightly different in the human brain compared to other species. For example, you can see here in this slide how uh, the temporal lobe, the human temporal lobe looks like at uh, gestational week 14. And if we take a horizontal section like this one, well, we see something like this with the lateral ventricle located here and this uh, structure corresponding to the hippocampus. If we look to this in more detail, we can see how down here we have the dentate neuroepithelium, and up here we have the forming granules layer. So after straining a, a, an adjacent section to this one for K67 SOX2 dividing neural stem cells, we can see how these dividing neural precursors are continuously distributed all across this region at this age. But if we go to older ages, just slightly older into gestation in gestational week 22, we notice that uh, we have these uh, large areas like this boxed area up here where there are no dividing neural stem cells next to the granule cell layer. Compared to other regions like this boxed area uh, down here where there are lots. So this was very striking for us because this is something very different from what we see in other uh, species uh, such as mice where we have a discrete subgranular zone with dividing neural stem cells even in adult stages. So this was even evident in uh, conventional light microscopy images, uh, like these ones, where we find regions like this region number one, with, uh, where we have uh, a high uh, cellular density compared to other regions like region number two, where there are much less cells. Furthermore, when we studied uh, the morphology of double courting uh, immature neurons, uh, comparing these uh, different regions, we found that in highly cellular areas, uh, these cells uh, presented a, a more immature phenotype compared to those in less cellular areas, suggesting that the granules of layer forms asymmetrically during gest gestation in the human dentate gyros. So we followed this up into all the ages and uh, saw that dividing cells don't actually coalesce into a discrete niche in the human dentate gyros. These are actual maps with the location of uh, uh, Chi67 dividing cells, not only neural precursors, but all dividing cells. And you can see how at uh, gestational ages, uh, these dividing cells are densely located in the hylos, but then with age, they uh, uni uniformly decline uh, without any clear bias for the subgranular zone compared to other regions. This is in sharp contrast with the uh, mouse. This is also a, an actual map of, uh, with the location of k 67 dividing cells in a P45 mouse. And you can see how these dividing uh, cells are located just beneath the granule cell layer in, in this uh, narrow ribbon. Maybe the one exception is this string here, and this corresponds to a blood vessel. So our results suggest that uh, 
in the, in the human dented gyrus don't actually form uh, an actual uh, subgranular zone with dividing neural stem cells, uh, not even in, in fetal stages. So to have an accurate idea with uh, what happens with uh, immature neurons, we generated similar maps with the location of double cortin PSA and CAM immature neurons. And we found that uh, these immature neurons were abundant at birth and, uh, and uh, mostly located in the granules layer. But then during the first year after birth, uh, this population rapidly decreased or declined and we were able to find some immature neurons at all the ages, like this uh, beautifully stained double cortin immature neuron in the granular layer of a 13-year-old sample. But our general impression is that uh, the number of uh, these immature neurons is rather scarce in the, in the uh, adult dented gyrus in the human. In sharp contrast, we found immature neurons in, in other regions of the temporal lobe in the very same samples. Uh, this is the very same sample that I showed you uh, in the slide before. And uh, we found in, uh, immature neurons in the endorrhinal cortex or, or in the paralaminar nucleus of the amygdala, two areas where uh, immature neurons had already been described. Actually, uh, the paralaminar nucleus is a relatively expanded region in the human and in the non-human uh, uh, primate brain. And it contains a population of immature neurons which persists longer in life, even in old ages. You can see in these electron microscopy images how <clears throat> uh, even at 45 years old we can find uh, these uh, cell clusters or small groups of cells uh, which are stained by, uh, with double cortin showing uh, immature morphology. So we did something similar to what we did for the dented gyrus and followed the decline of double cortin PSA and CAM immature neurons. And we found that uh, the maturation of these immature neurons is somehow protracted during life, uh, occurring mostly during, during adolescence. In this graph, graph here, you can see how at birth, uh, most of the cells in the paralaminar nucleus are immature, uh, double cortin PSA and CAM cells. But then this population rapidly de declines and uh, matures mostly during, during adolescence with a plateau of about 20 to 30% immature neurons in, in adult stages. Correspondingly, we also found that the number of uh, new and mature neurons uh, increased in a matching pattern during the same ages. And finally, we've characterized the molecular phenotype of these neurons, and we found that they turn into TBR1, Calvin in big glute 2 excitatory neurons. So in conclusion, uh, our data suggests that the, in the human dented gyrus, uh, we have a neuronal development that seems restricted to fetal and, and early postnatal stages. While we have this other region in the preliminar nucleus of the amygdala where neural stem cells also decline rapidly during the first year after life, after birth, sorry. Uh, but we have also a, a population of immature neurons which persists longer and, and presents a delayed uh, uh, maturation, suggesting that these two regions present a diver divergent speeds of neuron development in the human brain. Finally, I would like to thank all the members in the Laboratory of Comparative Neurobiology, which is led by Professor Jose Manuel Garcia Verdugo, to our many collaborators, but uh, especially to those involved in the work that I just presented, Arturo Alvarez Builla in UCSF, uh, Katsuno Usawamoto in Nagoya City University, Mercedes Paredes in UCSF, and Sean Sorrells in, Pittsburgh, in U University of Pittsburgh, and of course to our funding uh, institutions and to the organizers of this nice Congress. Thank you very much for your attention.